In my last two videos, I described the building of a consistent width finger jointed box along with the configuration of the cam module so that I could easily export curve corrected DXF files for that box. After recording those videos, I decided to make a couple of changes to the model and wanted to briefly review them with you. First, here in the cam module, I created a setup for each orientation of the box. Top down, front to back, back to front, etc. I added the bottom up setup, which I did not have in the last video, and I moved the bottom panel cut from the top down setup to the bottom up setup. I also edited the profile that was selected so that the cut is oriented from the bottom of the panel instead of the top. For this simple panel, as it is right now, nothing really changes, and this doesn't change what everything looks like, but in the future, as I use this box, for the basis of other projects, this orientation will become more important, so I felt that I should fix it now. Another thing to note is that when I created this, the notches that I cut into the bottom panel can result in this situation where the corners become very small. This depends on the dimensions of the box, but my fear here is that in certain situations, when the tolerances are really tight, I could snap one of these corners. So I decided that I already wanted to make a couple of changes to this box so that I can demonstrate the same box to you in future videos uh, without you having to wonder why things have changed. So I'm going to go back into the model workspace. And we can see the panels and the sketches that I used previously. Now, for me to make these changes, I'm going to go down and go back to the beginning of my timeline and move forward. I can see the sketch and the body that I extruded for the bottom. And then when I move forward, I can see where I created the notches along the front and then the notches along the left hand side of the bottom panel. So we can see them here. They're cut with the rectangular or the extrusion and then the rectangular pattern on. Each side. Now I need to change this, so I'm going to remove these six operations. And I'm going to get a warning here because future operations are dependent on this, but I'm going to delete them right now and we'll fix them one by one. If I go forward, I can already see this sketch is highlighted in yellow. I need to edit it. And I didn't notice this at the time, but it created this dependency on the notches on the left hand side. It, it added this or projected this line here. So I'm going to delete this line because I, it was unintentional and I don't need it and it's creating a false dependency. So we'll delete that. We can see our sketch is fixed and then we can stop the sketch and move forward in our timeline. And we can now see our front wall and the bottom panel without the notches. Now I'm going to go up and create a sketch and I'm going to create a sketch on the bottom of this front panel and I'm going to draw my notches on the bottom of this panel instead of along the edge of the bottom panel. Once that is done, I can extrude my notch and do negative thickness here to cut the notch. And then I can use the rectangular pattern to duplicate that notch, that feature that I just created, uh, along the front face of this panel. Always want to make sure that the distance type is set to spacing. Now, if I move forward to the next operation, we can see the combine operation and it cut off the notches from the front panel because the target and tool are incorrect here. So I'll edit this feature and I'll remove the target and tool and then I will swap them. So the bottom becomes the target and the front becomes the tool. But now I've created a new problem in that I have these corners or 
these little uh, nubs here at the end of each side of the front panel that I don't want. So I'll go back before the combine and I will turn off the bottom so I can see the front. I'm just going to extrude up to get rid of that notch. But before I do that, I need to create this mid plane. So I'm going to create the construction, the mid plane from the construct menu. And then I'm going to just extrude up this little notch here, negative thickness again. And remember, these are equal on both sides, which is why I can do this mirror. And then I will go up and mirror the cut from one side to the other, select that feature, and then select the midplane that I just created. Hit OK, and it cut off the other side here. And I can turn off that construction plane because I don't need it anymore. And if we go and look at the bottom panel and then move forward to the combine operation we already fixed, we can see our notches and fingers are, are fixed here. So next, I need to check the notches along the left-hand side, and those don't change, so that's fine. I'll move forward to where I copied the bottom panel. Again, that's fine because the operations don't need to change there. And then we get to the left panel, and again, the sketch is okay here, and the left panel extrudes correctly, but I now need to fix the combine operation where I had the front back, uh, front bottom and back panels as the tool. Before I do that, I want to isolate this panel and I'm going to create the sketch on the bottom of this panel again, and I'll reorient this so it's easier to see. And again, I'll go into construction line mode. I'll find the midpoint here. I'll draw my reference lines. I'll add the midpoint constraint, so these lines are symmetric around each other. I'll add the calculation here for how long my reference line needs to be. Uh, and then I will turn off construction mode and draw my rectangle here. And I will add my dimension constraint for the finger width and then add my coincident constraint here from the point to the side of the rectangle. And again, I will go up and I will extrude this, so negative thickness again. And then I can use the rectangular pattern to duplicate that along the face. Notice that this time again, my uh, arrow is pointed the wrong direction, so I need to do negative finger spacing here. Hit OK, and again I have this notch on the, each end that I need to get rid of, so I'll add the midplane from the front to the back. And then I will extrude up negative thickness here. And then once again, I need to mirror the new feature that I just created around the midplane. And that wall is fixed. I can then go in and rename these construction planes. So I've got the front panel midplane and the left, left panel midplane. And then I can go up and rename these sketches. So the front panel bottom fingers. And then the left panel bottom fingers here. Okay, those aren't renamed. And we can unisolate this panel and see everything. Now I need to move forward and I'll see the combine operation. But the bottom fingers are cut off because our combine operation is not correct. So I'll go up and select tool bodies and then click on this bottom panel to remove it from the tools. Hit OK, and now that's fixed. But now I need to go up and combine again with the target body now being the bottom and the tool being the left side. And that will cut my notches in the bottom panel. Now if I move forward in the timeline again, I can see where I copied the left panel to the right. And that looks good. And then the next one combine the front, bottom, and back panels with that right panel. And everything looks good here. These corners are now larger. I don't have to worry about it being too small and potentially breaking it off. And if I resize this box now, we can see that everything adjusts again. And these corners still look good. 
and this may not be the aesthetic you're looking for you might actually want the smaller corners for one of your projects so you can go either way here but I actually like this model a little bit better so this is the one that I'm going to be using for future videos I'm going to demonstrate how I use this instead of a box generator uh, for many of the projects I've been working on recently so I hope you found this useful and while I was showing you some things that I wanted to fix for my last couple of videos I hope it gave you some hints about how you can troubleshoot your own models in the future and it will certainly give you an idea of how I walk through making changes to this model in the future. But I hope it was useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.